a little late to the live today. I had a little headache earlier and I just couldn't get it to go away. So I had to just chill for a second. But now I'm going live and we're going to talk about what to do if you have a friend who's still using and they want you to come hang out or they need help. What do you do? We're going to talk about that and we're going to do my makeup at the same time. <laughs> So come on in, don't be shy, don't be scared, okay? Okay. Okay, I'm such a nerd. So let me get my setup set up. Y'all already know I gotta get my set up set up while I talk to you guys. Hey guys. Hey Nathan, hey Jillian, hey Sherry. What's up you guys? Okay. Okay, let me see. We are going to build a higher thing for my phone to go on top of because I just want it to be at a different angle than my double chin. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Let's see if this angle is a little bit better. My son has my other phone, so I can't podcast this. So I'll have to ask Mercedes to put this ah! episode on the podcast for me. So she'll do that for me, though. She's really awesome about that kind of stuff. So, okay, this is a little bit better. I feel like, oh, no, we need a little bit higher. Hold on. Hold on, people. I need a tripod. <laughs> Who wants to donate to the cause? Nate? Hold on, guys. My dog's barking like there's somebody at the door. I know the boys went outside to play, so I want to make sure they're okay. Oh. Y'all okay out here? Okay, just checking. Hey, turkey neck. Just making sure. Don't be too loud in that hallway because we don't want to disturb anybody, okay? But you can play there. That's fine. Hush. They're they're making they're making YouTube videos, y'all. They're making videos. My little my little videographers. Okay. So I can buy my own tripod. I'm just being silly. I just need one really bad and I so let's that looks a lot better. Okay. That's more straight on. So you're not like looking up at my double chin or looking down on my double chin. <laughs> Triple chin, whatever. How many chins I got? Okay. Paco Pico Train. Come here, co-host. Come here. Everybody wants you to be in the back. So we got to put you in the co-host spot. In the co-host spot. In the co-host spot. Co-host, are you ready for today's show? All right. Let's go. Okay, he's ready for today's show, y'all. All right, so I got a phone call today, and it was from a woman who has a friend who wants her to come hang out, but this friend of hers is somebody who is struggling with their own addiction and somebody who she's used with in the past, and so she wanted me to talk about um, what would you do if you're in that situation okay so I already put on a whole bunch of uh, my regular moisturizer which is the Clinique dramatically different moisturizing gel gel and now we're gonna do our sunblock okay so let me t share with you guys a mistake that I made when I was in recovery I think I told you all about this the other day so the other the other day a couple years ago Tara the girl who called CPS on me called me frantically crying because she was hallucinating that there was people underneath her daughter's bed and having sex with her daughter when she was asleep at night. So she wanted me to come over and check and make sure that there was nobody underneath the bed. Now, I think I had like four years sober at this time. So I had some sobriety time, but that doesn't matter. I had no business going over there by myself. It could have resulted in a lot. It could have resulted in a bad outcome. I could have went over there and got relapsed and high, got high. 
You know, I could have been really triggered and fucked up my, my whole sobriety. So, the reason why I share that with you guys is, yeah, I went over there, but I don't recommend anybody to do that. Anybody. Like, if you have a friend or loved one that's still using and they want to spend time with you, then they need to get sober themselves, okay? Because you don't have any business hanging out with people that are still using drugs if you're in recovery. Unless you work with people in a controlled environment, like a harm reduction uh, coalition or, you know, somewhere safe where you can be held accountable also, it's a dangerous, dangerous thing to do. And it could end up ruining your sobriety. You could end up making the biggest mistake of your life. Okay? So instead of going over there, this is what I would say to somebody that wants to hang out with me, but they're still using. I would say, so-and-so, I'm sorry, but not come over and hang out. I have to be selfish today with my recovery and my mental health, and I'm trying to protect the two. Hanging out with you would not be conducive. One, I love you, and I hope you understand, you know, and I would move on. Because once you get sober, you guys, really sober, you'll see how much you don't have in common with people who are using drugs. Okay? Like, when you get sober and you start doing the work, what is fun about driving around in a car all day long searching for methamphetamine or pills? There's nothing fun about it. Okay? There's nothing fun about it. And so... That's not forgetting where we came from. That's not us thinking we're better than... That is just common fucking sense. <laughs> Straight up. Straight up. Okay? Um, you have to protect your sobriety. Okay? Just like you, used, you, you went so hard to use drugs, you have to protect your sobriety as well. And having people who are actively using substances around you is not healthy. Like I said, unless you're working in treatment, you know, and then if you're working in treatment, hopefully you got a good, a good solid foundation in recovery, you know, um, that's why I've been so vocal about Miss Kent and her surrounding herself with people who are under the influence because it's not healthy and it's only going to drag her down. Let me share you guys a story of something that happened to me when I was in Girl Scout camp. I went to Girl Scout camp back in like 1992 or something like that. It was like a long time ago. And while I was there, there was a girl in the water. She was swimming and she started to drown. And so I didn't know any better and I jumped in to go save her. While I was trying to save her from drowning, she began to push me underwater. And drown me to save herself. And that's what happens when we end up trying to keep people around us that are using drugs when we have no business doing that. They can end up drowning us and bringing us down with them. So if you want to work and you want to help people in recovery and you want to help people that struggle with addiction, okay, there are ways to do that safely and effectively without... Um, without risking your own recovery. And that's certainly not having people up in your house who are smoking meth, having sex workers in your house who are high on heroin, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? It's just not. There's the co-host. Say hi, co-host. Um, And, you know, what I found so, um, what I find so funny is when people try to defend said action and they say things like, we help addicts in, that are in active addiction because we haven't forgotten where we came from. Oh, baby, it ain't about that. And if you keep doing what you're doing the dangerous way, you're, you're going to end up ending right back where you came from. And we all know that. We've all been there. One of the main things that I tried to do whenever I was um, first getting sober, not this last time. This last time I had learned my lesson. Before this.
this. I had kept on trying to keep people around me that were uh, using substances. I didn't want to let go of those old friendships. Hey, Nate. Nate, will you do me a favor and shut my door, baby? Will you shut my door? Thanks, baby. Um, I kept on trying to keep people around me that were using substances. And I thought, hope you guys are having fun. It, I, I kept thinking it was like not that big of a deal that I could stay sober even though they were getting high, that it wasn't going to affect my sobriety. But there's this old saying that they say that if you keep going to the motherfucking barbershop, you're going to get a haircut. And damn, dude, that is so true, you guys. That is so freaking true. I have seen it time and time again with people in recovery who don't want to let go of the old people, places, and things. They don't want to separate from that lifestyle. Okay, if somebody doesn't want to separate from that lifestyle, that's a telltale sign, okay, that they are not ready. They're not ready to get sober, okay? And that's that there's nothing to be ashamed of. Honey, if you don't want to get sober and stay sober, there ain't nothing wrong with that. Don't fucking act like you are. Did you leave out of your bed, little boy? Okay, so, um, my critiques of Jessica Kent and her, um, relationships with people who are still in active addiction are, are rightfully so also, you guys. And the, the reason why is because she has been in recovery or says she's been in recovery long enough to know these things. Okay, like these things are like recovery 101 beginner shit, you know, and so um, keeping people around us that are still using substances can be dangerous to our sobriety. Uh, so I'm not going to be a dead horse with you guys, but um, I think it, that it's totally understandable why you would want to help, you know, a friend if they were struggling. But you guys, you have to think about, like, what could this do to my sobriety? If I help this person, what could happen? Like, could it end up backfiring on me? Could I end up getting in trouble? Could it end up triggering me? Like, what could happen? You know, that's really, really important for you to think about. Because now, now you, you go back and relapse, you could die, okay? After you get sober and you have a little time sober, guess what can happen, okay? You could go out and relapse and die because your system is not used to using anymore. Your tolerance and everything has gone down. So if you go out there and you start using right where you left off, you know, you could die. That's another reason why it's so important for us to change our people, places, and things, you know, because we could die, you know? So, and like I said, I work with people in active addiction all the time, but I do it in a safe way where I'm not putting myself or my family in danger. You know, like I'm not having people in my house who are using substances, you know, I'm not going to people's houses who are using substances. If I do meet up with somebody who is still using substances, it's in a public place, you know, like very open public place where that way I have support from whoever's with me because I don't go alone, right? And it's a lot um, safer that way for everybody involved, for the person I'm helping also, you know? So. Yes, we are doing an eye look today and we are going to do purple because y'all know purple is my favorite color and I haven't done a purple eye look since last week <laughs> so I thought we could do a purple eye look and talk some recovery um, answer questions if you guys have any um, questions and just chit chat you know like just chit chat and chill just chit chat and chill okay where is my good um, bronzer stick E2. Purple's my favorite color. For those of you guys that did not know, purple is my favorite color. Purple and I love yellow, but purple is my favorite color to wear on my face, on my eyes. And I'm going to show you guys this bomb-ass purple blush that you're going to be obsessed with. 
here in a few minutes once I get to the blush part of my makeup look. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I uploaded a bunch of my old um, Facebook Lives onto my um, other channel, my, my recovery channel where we talked about different recovery stuff. We talked about sex in recovery. We talked about uh, relationships in recovery. We talked about Suboxone. We talked about all kinds of different things on my other channel. And a lot of you guys never saw, most of you guys have never seen those videos because y'all, a lot of you guys were not subscribed to my first channel. Um, a lot of my people who were subscribed, I feel like ha still haven't found this channel yet. And it makes me so sad, dude. Like, oh, it makes me so sad. I think about them every day. One of you guys, Dan, shout out to Dan, text messaged me today. And he said, I didn't know you had a podcast. It was recommended to him, you guys. My podcast was recommended. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Hey, Nate, can I see my phone for a second? Just for a second. I want to see what we're up to on viewers on the podcast. Huh? Can I see my phone for just one second? I'll give it right back to you. I want to see what we're up to on the podcast viewers. Okay. So I think we're almost to 700 viewers on my podcast, y'all, or listeners, which is phenomenal. <laughs> what are you doing? You let me make. I'm not going to watch it on live. Okay. Because I don't want to, because I know y'all say some stuff that's inappropriate. <laughs> okay. 684 listeners. That's my audience size. Wow. In a week, we started the podcast last Monday. So thank you, everybody who is listening. Oh, yay! And Mercedes, shout out. Everybody give Mercedes a round of applause. She uploaded my recovery videos on there, too. I sent her some recovery videos I needed uploaded, and so she got those uploaded, too. Thank you, Mercedes! She's the shit, y'all. This girl, I told her, please let me give you some money. I'm going to have to find out her address or something so I can just send her money in the mail because she will not let me pay her, okay, for helping me with this. And I do not believe in taking people's kindness, advantage of their kindness, because I need her to be like my permanent podcast person. <laughs> You know, so now my addiction and recovery uh, podcast is on there, too. So y'all can listen to that if you didn't get to hear the live yesterday. So that's great. OK, because listen, I know I'm talking about a bunch of other people, but baby, I will talk about my shit, too. I will expose myself. So don't get it twisted. OK, don't get it twisted. I'm not over here just talking about myself. I talk about it. I mean, I'm not over, just over here talking about other people. I will talk about myself. Purple blush. Okay, this is called Drama Class by Fenty Beauty, and it is a bomb-ass beautiful purple blush. Um, so that's the great thing about me is that I'm not like Jessica Kent. I don't just post other people's dirty laundry and kiss my own ass. I'll post my dirty laundry too. <laughs> Okay, straight up, straight up. Um, I think it's important to hold ourselves accountable and to be honest, you know, and like I was telling you guys yesterday about my struggles with my weight and stuff. That's something that I've struggled with for so many years, you guys. Like it is so hard for me to get my weight under control and I'm so depressed about it. And I think it's important to share that with you guys because I know a lot of you guys are going through the same thing too. And so, you know, some people would be ashamed of that and not want to share it and think that they should be ashamed, but you shouldn't be ashamed. You should share that because you sharing that is going to help other people to be able to overcome their struggle with their weight, you know? I also want to say somebody pointed out something they said, Nicole, you don't like Jessica um, because I said I didn't hate her. And you're right. I don't hate Jessica. I strongly dislike her. But I started out the very beginning. I did like her because I didn't know her. <laughs> 
because I didn't know shit about her. And that's what she banks on people doing is just not doing their research or knowing shit about her and just blindly following her because that's what a lot of young people do on this platform. So, see how pretty that purple blush is, you guys? Ugh, my weight is the bane of my existence. You know, it's like, it's always been a struggle for you, me, you guys, since I was a little girl. Um, I can remember, like, my dad locking the um, refrigerator with a deadbolt. Um, and nowadays, if I did that to my son, that would be considered abuse. <laughs> Okay, how many of you guys had Italian fathers who, if you weren't, if you weren't making money or contributing to the family and you were eating too much, they would straight up put a deadbolt on the fridge? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> or am I the only one? Okay. <laughs> um, it was pretty fucking bad. <laughs> When I look at myself in the mirror, let me share with you guys. And I've, I made all these videos you guys have not got to see because they were on my old account. On my old account, I made a video of me standing in front of the full length mirror in my bathroom and sharing with you guys what I see in the mirror. Which, what, what, uh, what I see when I look at my body is four chins coming down connecting right here and I don't see any neck like I feel like I don't have a neck okay um what's some other thing when I look at my my legs which are my most I feel like my best I feel like my legs are my best asset they're beautiful and strong but when I look at them in the mirror I see the insides of my thighs I was trained to believe that fat is ugly ever since I was a little girl. Um, when I was a little girl, and you guys please don't get this fucked up with what I'm saying, okay? My dad is the best dad anybody could ever have, but he was very insecure about his own weight. So my dad was a bodybuilder. So he would lift a lot of weights to, to be in shape, okay? And he was obsessed with it. He did it all the time. He won competitions. Um, where's the picture? I need to show you guys my father. And then you'll understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> so ever since I was a little girl, my dad was obsessed, obsessed with his own weight. And so um, he would always point out his own weight along with my mother's weight and my sister's weight. And this is my dad at over 60 years old. <sighs> okay, does that tell you anything? So, because my dad was always concerned about his own weight, right? He always focused on weight and, and, and here's the thing. The reason why my father struggled with his weight is because my dad has binge eating disorder. He's never been diagnosed, but I'm diagnosing his ass. Okay. And he'll even tell you, he'll even tell you if he, if he, if he doesn't push himself away from the table, he could eat a whole pizza. I can do the same thing. Um, it's like the food, the taste of the food and the way the dopamine hits your brain is so euphoric for somebody that has binge eating disorder that we will just continue to eat through the pain of overeating. Like it can hurt because my stomach is getting so full, but it tastes good. And the way the, I guess I don't subconsciously know or feel the dopamine, but it's there. So I know it's happening, you know? And so I will sit there and I will eat through the pain, do you know? And that's what my father would do same exact thing and so that's what my son does 
same exact thing. And I'm trying to help my little boy by getting healthy foods for him to snack on because he loves to go to the refrigerator and find things to eat, you know? And so I'm trying to get him like little healthy snacks like carrot and applesauce snacks and uh, broccoli, those little uh, vegetable platter things. But right now I'm so happy because him and his friend are outside playing, running in and outside, and that's what they're supposed to be doing. As boys, they're supposed to be running in and outside, playing outside, not sitting in front of the damn Nintendo playing video games. You know what I mean? Okay, now let's get this purple eye look on the way. So we're gonna pull some purples from a couple different of my palettes. So I'm gonna show you guys real fast and then we'll get into it. We're gonna use that deep purple right there. That's from the Anastasia and um, Jackie Anna palette. And we're gonna use this purples here. Yeah. You're hungry? Okay, can you give me just one minute and then I'm gonna make y'all some lunch, okay? All right, cool. Cool. Nathaniel! Nathaniel! Let's go make them lunch real fast. It'll be easier that way. Then we can come and relax and do our makeup, okay? Because, oh, I want to make him a good lunch. Hey, Nate. Hey, Nate. Alexander Poo Poo. I'm asked Cajun chicken. I can make you a sandwich on a bagel. Cajun, or I can... Cajun turkey with toasted bread. Toasted bread? Melted cheese. And melted cheese. Okay. Hey, Zane. Yeah. Do you want a sandwich? I got Cajun turkey or Cajun, uh, Cajun chicken. Uh, chick, um, turkey. Turkey? Okay. Yeah, with cheese, but put, but put regular, just white bread. Just white bread? Do you yeah. want your uh, toasted, your bread toasted? And okay. the cheese melted? Uh, just a little bit, like 15 seconds. Okay. All right. That's what I'll do. I'll, I'll bring it to y'all when they're done. Okay. So, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Um, so, let's make this turkey, let's make these sandwiches for the boys cheese and turkey so we're gonna melt the cheese and toast the bread Nate likes wheat and uh, Zane likes white so we're gonna do this beautiful purple eye look so just give me a few seconds okay <laughs> okay let me get these boys fed because they have y'all have y'all had to see them they've been running in and out of this house for the last hour or two just going in and out filming videos and running up and down the stairs and we live on the fourth floor so they have been getting their exercise <laughs> okay there's that one we'll do it like that and then we'll do this one Bada bing, bada boom. Um, so growing up, like I was telling you guys, my dad um, was obsessed with his weight. So he would always talk about me and my sister's weight, just kind of trying to encourage us to eat healthy. You know, he wasn't like, y'all are fat or anything like that. He would just try to encourage us to make healthy choices because, um, you know, he didn't want us to struggle like he did. Well, my mom you can make healthy choices and still eat what you shouldn't because you eat too much of the healthy choices and that's what would happen to me was i would just be gorging myself on these healthy choices <laughs> you know this is my shirt that i just do my housework and stuff in because it's got bleach stains all over it so y'all don't mind me but um i would just like gorge myself on these fucking healthy choices and that's not healthy <laughs> obviously right so I started to gain weight at a younger age, at a young age, but no, when my weight really started to bother me was when I was like 12 or 13. You know, I was old enough to know that um, everybody else was not overweight like I was. And I probably was, I could have probably stand to lose about 10 or 15 pounds. I wasn't, when I say overweight, I don't mean like I am now. Now I'm a good 50 pounds overweight, right? Back then I was not, honey, I would kill to be like I was back then. I was fine as wine, honey. 
when I look back at those times, Nathaniel, hey Nate, poo poo train. Don't ask me why I call my son Nathaniel. Do you want some carrots with ranch? That's I'm, I've nicknamed my son Nathaniel Poo Poo Train years ago, and he loves it. And we laugh and we call each other these different nicknames. So don't think I'm being mean to him or anything. Uh, Nathaniel Poo Poo Train. Okay. They both don't like mayonnaise or mustard. Isn't that crazy? Plain Janes. Okay. Nate! I hate that he makes me yell his name so many times, y'all. It drives me insane. Like, literally. <laughs> Did y'all's kids do that? Does y'all's kids make you... Nathaniel! Come here, son! Here you go. Says uh, he like ranch and uh, carrots. Here you go. This is yours. Yeah, yeah, Here yeah, yeah. What's yours? Do you want more carrots than that? Don't just spill that. Zane, watch the live right now. Watch the live. Ask Zane if he wants ranch and carrots. Yes or no? He's he wants. Let me just go give him this, y'all. Here you go. Here you go, Zane. I didn't think you did. Okay, yeah. Zane likes his stuff plain. He likes his stuff plain. So, no problem there. Hey, Nate, just eat in there because y'all's room is a mess and I'm going to have to clean it up anyway. So, just demol eat in there, not in my nice living room that I done cleaned today. <laughs> Look at this bedroom, y'all. Oh, hell no. <laughs> That room is a pigsty. Um, so, anyway. They, I say their names like 60 times, okay? Like, so annoying. Okay. Let's do this makeup look. Yeah, did you see Nate's hair? Um, I let him do a color in underneath the bang so, so it peeks out. And I just think it looks so cute. So, what do y'all want to talk about? I'm going to let y'all talk, talk, ask me questions or something, or bring up a topic. Hey, Coralie, you want to come on and share and talk about it and do a live together? That would be cool. Gypsy Rock. Girl, I've been subscribed to your channel since 2015. You know why? Because you read the book. What book was it? Uh, Nikki Six's book. And I would fall asleep to your ass reading that book at night. Did you know that? Sure did, girl. I don't know if it was since 2015, but I know it's been a long time. Yeah. Yes, girl. I don't know how I found your channel. I think I was uh, searching for an audiobook for Nikki Six's audiobook, and your video popped up. And so I would listen to it at night and fall asleep. So I've known who you are for a while. A long time. Since since I was first gotten sober, and I got sober in 2015, I really started watching YouTube around 2016, 2017. So it's been since then, you know. Girl, pe take some Benadryl, Pixie, so that way you don't get your eyes swollen shut. That's what I have to do sometimes when I got allergies and stuff, um, or sickness that makes me kind of swell up. Really, Darcy, you know what? I will tell y'all this about Christina Randall, okay? 
Nicole is a, she's somebody to look up to. Okay. I look up to her because she's so dedicated to keeping her body in shape and working out and going on her runs like and drinking water. Like I watch her videos. Like I know y'all probably didn't think that, but I watch her, her channel with her, where she vlogs and I watch her true crime videos. Me and my husband love watching her true crime videos, but she's a great example of somebody who is living their life, the, you know, and doing things the right way. You know, or whatever she got in trouble for in the past. I don't really remember. I know she had troubles when she was younger. And so I think she's great. Yeah, I think she's great. But um, that's what I want to do. I want to be able to get myself in shape and help people that struggle with binge eating disorder like I have for so many years, you know? Um, I really, really, really do. Stories from my life that will literally make your ass fucking laugh so hard. Okay. And then my second book is going to be how I've been able to maintain sobriety on MAT and how I became more open-minded after being in a 12-step fellowship for many, many years. And my third book, um, it's going to be like what it's like for me as a mom, I think. But I say that and I probably take forever for me to write a book. I need somebody to help me do it because I'm not very good with art, with words. But, um, yeah, if I ever do, I have been thinking about doing the, the one about the short stories. That's the one I want to do the most is I want to share a series of short stories from my life in active addiction shit from, from fucking fucking sobriety too because i got some funny stories from my sobriety too um but one of the most funniest stories i can tell you guys from my active addiction was when i was hallucinating all the time so the reason why i hallucinated so much was because of lack of sleep um it wasn't because like i have an underlying um mental illness or anything like that it was sim simply because of psychosis from lack of sleep Okay, and I would hallucinate so bad being up on meth um, that I would talk to people that weren't there. And there was one time in particular, and I've told this story many times, but a lot of you guys probably have never heard it. One time in particular, I had been on about a five-day bender, okay? And at the beginning of this bender, I was over at my friend Gerald's house, and we had been shooting Roxy's and shooting meth. I always shot them. I always did these drugs interchangeably so a lot of people are like how can you be addicted to opiates and um, uppers because i was because that's how i roll okay i like to be like totally incapacitated i like to be unconscious okay <laughs> when i get high i like to be able to not see straight that's how i was when i used drugs i took it to the next level i was a fucking lush i was a fucking junkie okay i was like really bad <laughs> I can laugh about it now, but it's the truth. Okay. So what I would do is I would do meth and go to work and like do all the things I needed to do to take care of my bills. And then I would use downers to go to sleep at night or try to go to sleep at night. Let me use that word. Try to go to sleep at night. And I would fail miserably, miserably fail. Okay. This is one of my favorite purple eyeshadows in the whole wide world just because of the tone of it. It's by Menagerie Cosmetics. So um, I had been on this five day vendor and I had started out over at Barry and Gerald's house. Okay. So Barry, Gerald, and Darren. Gerald was this guy that I used to have sex with um, that I met in Little Rock when I first got out of prison. When I first got out of prison, um, I stayed sober for nine months and I relapsed over at my friend Ashley's house. So during that nine month period, I was able to move from the sober living house into the next door, which was the sober living apartments. They were still ran by the treatment center. So I still like had, they were still like checking up on me, but like I had a lot more freedom. Okay. 
So I've moved over to the sober living apartments and I had nine months sober and I went over to Ashley's house because we were best friends. And when I went over to her apartment, because she lived in the same apartments as me, she was shooting up Roxy's and she needed help. And she asked me if I could shoot her up and I said, sure. And so I shot her up with a Roxy. Now at that time, I had never shot up opiates before. I had been shooting meth, cocaine, everything, but I always just popped opioids. So when she shot that Roxy in front of me, I was like, hot diggity damn, you got another one of those, bitch? And she was like, yeah, you want one? And I was like, yeah. So she gave me a Roxy 30. I shot it up and I was like, heaven, I've never been in a place quite like you. Jesus, is that you? Let me kiss your feet. <laughs> like it was really euphoric and I love the way it made me feel so I relapsed and she took me next door to this high-rise apartment called the towers and we went over to this guy's house called um his name was Porky his name was Porky his he was a black guy he called, he went by Porky don't ask me his just saying he went by Porky okay and Gerald was there and Porky was selling Roxy's like mad Roxy's like so many Roxy's so that's where I started buying them from well while I was over at Porky's house um I met Z who would become my drug dealer for all through my addiction from that point forward and so anyways I always think about Z because he was one of those guys who i I really, like, me and him, we would hook up and stuff, and I really, like, liked him as a person, but he was also a drug dealer, you know? He was my drug dealer, and so um, I think about him sometimes and wonder if he got out of the drug dealing game and turned his life around or not, but, you know, I'm not going to go check on him. <laughs> Anyways, so... I met Porky and Gerald, and they started selling me Roxy's, and then they introduced me to Z, and Z had everything. Roxy's, Xanax's, um, everything, except for meth. Okay, so once I got out of prison for my meth charge, I really turned into a, a opiate addict, like more so than I'd ever been before in the past. I was, you know, injecting opiates every day and taking benzos every day you know and when I could get meth I would do it too so this in particular time I was on this little bender I had been over at Gerald and Barry's and we had all been doing meth and um oxys and um I decided to leave and go over to my friend Tara's house okay so this was like on day three of the bender I said oh I'm gonna go over to Tara's house and see what she's doing I'll be back later and so I left the house and I went over to Tara's. When I walked into Tara's house, and this is day three probably with no sleep, okay? Yeah, about day three. I walk into Tara's house and I, and I, and I, the minute I hit her door, you guys, I am seeing Roxy 30 pills all over the floor in her apartment or in her, she lived in a duplex. In the duplex she lived in, all I saw was all these little blue pills on the ground. And I was like, why are you just sitting there with all these Roxy pills laying on the ground? Watering and my mouth was watering. And so I got on the ground and I started picking these pills up and putting them into my little silver spoon. Bitch, there wasn't no motherfucking pills there. There wasn't a damn thing on that floor but cat fucking shit, trash, cat hair, all kinds of horrible things. And guess what your dumbass friend Nicole did? I mixed it up in a spoon and shot that shit up in my arm. Hallucinating. So, it was probably about an hour after I did that shot. My temperature went to 101. Ping! And I was sweating. My face was turning red. I was sick, dude. Something bad was going on. And so, I was watching TV with Tara. And all I seen was the news. There was, I don't know if the news was on or not. But I seen the news and I saw her flying over our house right they were coming for us and Tara was like Nicole let's calm down Gianna wants to go to the mall so we all got in her car and we drove to the mall when we stepped foot in that mall you guys I was like a deer in headlights because all I could see was those damn fluorescent lights 
I was scared for my life, dude. I was crying in the mall, walking through the mall so high. So we left after about five minutes, okay? And we came back home. Well, when we came back home, I was like, bitch, I'm out. And I took off walking. I had the keys to my car in my pocket, and I took off walking next door, just walking past the next door neighbor's house. And the next door neighbor, I guess she seen me and noticed that something was wrong with me. So she called 911. When she called 911, the police came. And then they seen that something was wrong with me, and they called an ambulance, okay? And the ambulance came and got me, threw me in the vehicle, took me to the emergency room. Well, in this emergency room is when my hallucinations took on a whole new, another level, you guys. Now, I've never really talked about him a lot to you guys, but there was this guy that I used to be in love with. His name was Joe, okay? I met Joe. Um, he had just gotten out of the federal penitentiary, and he was at the sober living house that I was at, taking classes, and then going back and living at the fed house. So we met outside of the sober living house and I gave him my number and the rest is history. Okay. We were joined at the hip for a while. So I was really in love with this guy. And at this time in our relationship, when I was going through all this hallucination and stuff, he had really started to distance himself from me because of how bad my addiction was getting. And so I was hallucinating that Joe was in, and he only had one leg, just so y'all know. Let me tell you, back up. When we first started dating, we were having, we're getting ready to have sex, okay? We're getting naked. This fool pulls his leg off. Like, I didn't even know he didn't have a leg, okay? So, if that tells you anything about the state of my mind, um, that I didn't even notice that this fool had a fake fucking leg from the knee down, like, I don't know what else to tell you, okay? So, anyways, he's in this trash can, and I'm sitting in St. Vincent's waiting room, and he's in a trash can, and he's rolling across the fucking waiting room in one of those rolling trash cans. And he's bald-headed. Okay. <laughs> Let me show y'all what he looks like, damn it. I gotta show y'all so y'all can see. So y'all can see the vision with me, okay? And don't worry, he knows I make these videos. He watches my videos. Hey, Joe, I love you. Don't be, don't be shy. Say hi to everybody, okay? Okay. So this fool, and he'll tell you, I was skied in and done. He was so sick and tired of my shit that he was done. Okay. Joseph. the hell is it not showing me people it's like taking forever dude anyways oh god damn it i know i have a picture of him somewhere let me go to my fucking messages because the only time he reaches out to me now is when he needs to get bailed out of jail my husband hates that shit he gets pissed he's like why does this fool call you when he needs to get bailed out of jail like you're gonna get him out of jail i said i don't know because i'm not getting him out of jail baby don't worry my husband knows i ain't getting his ass out of jail I'm going to text him and ask him if he's okay because I haven't talked to him in a while. Okay, there we go. Okay. Ba, 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 ba. I want to show you guys so y'all can understand me and Joe's f fucking friendship was so straight. was strange in, to be the... He, he used me. He used me. I ain't going to lie about it. He got... He got... He used me, little sucker. But it is what it is. The past is in the past. You know, it's over and done with now. Um, I don't hate him for it and I don't have resentment towards him for it. Like... We were both in a bad spot. Where's this fucking pictures at? I know he has pictures in here. Anyway. God dang it. That pisses me off that I can't see his pictures. We're friends. Weird. Anyway. He's bald headed. Okay. Um, he's got tattoos. He's done prison time. Here's a... 
a second. I just saw a good picture of him from the past. He has some good pictures of him from the past on here. Um, dude, dude. There we go. That I took this picture, okay? <laughs> if you know what I mean. So, <laughs> I think he might have pictures of me on there because I, we had some some fucking crazy times together. But anyways, so I had been in love with Joe, okay? He and and he he was in love with me at a point also, but I fucked it up. I fucked it up bad because I was all fucked up on drugs and la la la. We were a horrible couple together because he was super selfish. I was really giving and he just sucked me dry and then I started sucking. Okay. So anyways, um, caring guy, love him to death, but not a good time. So how did he tie in this? Oh yeah. So I'm sitting in the fucking um, waiting room of St. Vincent's and I am hallucinating that Joe is in a fucking trash can rolling. I love gingers. And he was a ginger too. You see that? You caught that? You caught that? So, um, so he, and I never realized I had a thing for gingers until I started looking back at my past boyfriends and like four of them are gingers. And I'm like, damn girl, you must like the, uh, fire crotches. So <laughs> anyway, so Joe is rolling around from side to side in this fucking trash can, right? And I am hallucinating that he is. And I'm screaming, I'm yelling at him. And the people in the damn um, hospital, they're getting tired of me, y'all. Like, they are like this girl. And so they're fucking taking forever to take me back to a room. Well, they finally take me back to a room, and they don't do shit. They're trying to talk me into going to rehab, right? And it's like midnight by this time. So I was like, you know what? Fuck this shit. I'm out of here. And I left AMA. Took off walking down the road. So I'm walking down the street and uh, I called my old sponsor, Robin. Now, Robin, she was an old, she was a hooker. She used to be a hooker. Um, and I say hooker because she worked like the truck stops. Okay. I'm not talking about like, she was a lot lizard is what they call them. And she'll tell you that herself. So I'm not saying that to be ugly. It's just, it's the truth. Okay. So she was a lot lizard. So I call my friend, I call Robin because we're friends, even though she, I, I relapsed. And I'm like, listen, I'm higher than Cooter Brown. I need you guys to come get me and go get my car from Tara's house because I'm fucking some shit up. I just left the hospital AMA. And so she's like, okay, they take it back to their house and take me back to their house. And we, we come to a, an agreement. She needed money. I needed a place to stay, so I moved in with her, thinking that it would help me in my sobriety to stay sober. Can't nobody hold me down, baby. Can't nobody chain me down and make me stay sober. The next day, I was back over at Gerald's house. But I stayed at her house, and I stayed paying her rent, half of her rent, for like a year because I needed somewhere to store my stuff that was safe. I didn't want to keep it at Gerald's house. It was just caca, you know? So I'm back over at Gerald's house the next morning, back on my fucking bullshit, doing meth and doing Roxy's, eating Xanax bars, just fucking up shit, right? And that's when I'm sitting in the recliner and I start to hallucinate. Cy from Duck Dynasty is in the vent. So let me show y'all what I mean by in the vent. Okay. So I'm sitting here and Cy is there. He's sticking his, his whole head's coming out of a vent like that, right? And he is sticking his head out of that vent, and in his hand, on one hand, he has a tea, but in the other hand, he has a, a knife, a big-ass machete knife, okay? And in my mind, in that recliner, there was a rope, and I was on a catapult, and he was going to slice the rope, and I was going to go, wee and fly out of the top of the, of the trailer. So what I had to do is sit there and watch him so he wouldn't shoot me out of the top of the trailer. And that's what I did for six hours straight. So I've told this story many times to people, and I thought nobody would ever believe me. But then Barry and Darren, Barry passed away. Darren shows up on my TikTok account and is like, Bitch, I remember that night. <laughs> and I was like, it was horrible.
horrible because I had the, I was fucking like bothering them, right? Like I was so that Cy was going to shoot me out of the trailer that I'm asking them, do you see it? Do, it like it is horrible, y'all. It is horrible. So after so many hours go by and I'm stuck, like I haven't moved from that recliner. I finally got myself together enough to say, nobody's shooting you out of the top of the trailer, Nicole. You need to go to sleep. So I went to Gerald and I said, listen, man, I need to go to sleep. Please help me. And that's when Gerald gave me a 100 milligram Seroquel pill. That was the worst thing that I could have ever fucking done was take 100 milligrams of Seroquel. Okay. So I take the Seroquel pill and I go into Barry and Darren's bedroom because they're a couple. And I lay down. I lay down with them and I tell them, please don't let me get up. Like I need to sleep. I'm in a bad way. Y'all know the deal. Watch over me. Right. Y'all, like I told you guys, nobody can hold me down. Okay, I think I laid there for seven minutes, maybe, if that, and I got right back up, walked out the front door, and left. Walking, okay? I have a vehicle, you guys. Thank God God didn't let me drive my vehicle. <laughs> but I have a vehicle. When I'm doing all these strange things, I have a fucking perfectly good car. <laughs> so, I take off in the middle of the night walking down the street. All right, I have no shoes and socks on. I have boxers and a t-shirt on, and I'm walking down the street in the middle of the night. Well, while I'm walking, now we're in a trailer park on Baseline Road, which is like the hood in Southwest Little Rock, okay? And we're wa I'm walking down the road, and I'm looking around, and I look around, and my eye catches um, this trailer that has like a kind of little deck on it, right? That you could step out on and sit outside and walk and look at the sun or whatever, the stars or whatever. And I look over there and in my hallucination, I see weed, brownies, t piled high to the sky on this lady's um, deck. And I rush over there and I start sweeping this lady's deck with a stick, I guess. Well, this little lady just happened to be a little Mexican lady. Okay, so she sticks her head out the window. It's like 3 a.m. by this time. And she sticks her head out the window and she starts speaking Spanish to me. And I don't know what she's saying. And then the next thing you know, she shuts the door. Bitch, when I tell you the cops were there in 0 0.2 seconds, the cops were there in 0 0.2 seconds. They pulled up with their guns fucking blazing. Okay, pulled their guns on me, fucking yelling and screaming at me. Get down on the ground, get down on the ground. I'm hallucinating. I'm ducking and weaving. Okay. I'm like this. And thank God they did not shoot me y'all. Thank God. The, do the officer came and got my phone from me and called my mom. And he said, Miss DeMeo, you know, your daughter is in a really bad way. And that's when my mom told the officer, please take her to the emergency room. She is a drug addict. And so they called the ambulance. And an ambulance came and got me and took me to the emergency room. This is my second emergency room in less than 24 hours. Okay. So they took me to the emergency room. And I am calling Joe from my phone over and over and over again, telling him to please come get me from Gerald and Barry's house. So while I'm doing that, guess what Joe does? He goes to get me from Gerald and Barry's house. He said he was so fucking mad, you guys. Um, I did not know that he did this, but years later, after he got, he went back to prison and then he got in trouble with the law and then he found me on Facebook. This was probably like two or three years ago. He calls me and he says, you know that I drove all the way out there to come get you and you were nowhere to be found, you fucking bitch. <laughs> and I was like, dude, I was in the hospital, you know? And so anyway, uh, <laughs> so crazy. So, I'm in the hospital now, and they keep asking me if I've done bath salts. And I'm like, dude, how many times do I have to tell you guys that I didn't do any bath salts? And I told them everything that I had been doing, okay? Everything. 
while I'm in there, I'm seeing my boss from Kroger hallucinating. I'm seeing Miss Marva, the lady who taught me how to fry chicken, in there hallucinating. I'm smoking crack out of an invisible crack pipe, hallucinating. I am licking the walls, hallucinating. Okay? Like, it is a shit show. And those doctors had had enough of me. So they got me in my own room and shot me up with a shot of Thorazine and a shot of Halidol. And they said, that'll do it. She won't fucking be awake after this. Well, they come back 30 minutes later as a, a bitch is still awake. <laughs> a bitch is still awake, okay? So they come back and they're like, what the hell is going on here? That's when they make the crucial mistake. And they give me a second shot of Thorazine and Halidol, which basically sends my internal organs into shutting down and sends me into a medication-induced coma. I almost die. Medi Medically-induced coma. Um, all my organs started shutting down. I was dying. I, I was in a coma for seven fucking days. Okay? All they had to do, really, was make sure that I was hydrated and, and keep an eye on me. And just let it run its course. But no. They were trying to sh fucking do, do me in. You know. And so. The hospital. Killed me. Okay. They almost killed me. So now I'm in a coma for seven days. Alright. They call my parents. They're telling my mom and dad. We don't know if your daughter is going to live to see tomorrow. My mom and dad. My mom and dad show up at the hospital. My dad collapses on the hospital room floor, okay, crying because his firstborn daughter is in a coma and he doesn't know if she's going to live, okay? Seven days later, I woke up from that coma, all right? And this is probably one of the scariest things about this whole situation. Seven days later, I woke up from that coma and my mom said, do you know how long you've been here? And I said, no. She said, you've been in a coma for seven days. And all I could think about was how bad I wanted to get out so I could get high again. <sighs> Not, oh my God, I can't believe I, I made it. I'm alive. No, fuck that. I need to get out of here so I can get high. And maybe that is the, that was that, so that's what happened. That's what happened. And that is the story time of the time that I went into a coma for seven days and almost killed myself. Yeah, it's, it's an old Ed Hardy shirt. No, 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 no. This is not Ed Hardy. This is, um, sorry. This is a civil regime. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, so that is how I almost died. <laughs> I hope that was an, uh, it was an enjoyable active addiction story time for you guys while we did makeup. Um, but even after, even after going through that coma, you guys, I still got high for many, many years after that. Okay. Many, many years after that. That was in 2011. I didn't get sober until 2015. Okay. So that's why I always tell people like, you can't make anybody get sober. Like it doesn't matter if they almost die, right? To, it, it, that person has to choose the time when they're ready to get sober. This is one of my favorite highlight palettes. It's the Nicole Guerrero and um, Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. And I love it. So. And I'm not telling you these stories because I'm like, yeah, getting high is cool. Don't even try it, people. Okay? I'm telling you the story because how life used to be and how much better I've gotten today. Like, I'm a miracle. It's a miracle that I can form complete sentences. <laughs> it's a miracle that I can fucking work a job, you know? It's a miracle that I'm healthy today, y'all. It's a miracle. And I'm so fucking grateful for that. Like, I love my life today. You know, I love being in recovery today. I love helping other people with recovery 
and I love sharing my little crazy stories with you guys. It's fun to be able to let you know, hey, I've been down through there, but I'm back now, and I'm never going to let myself go back there. I don't want to do that. I don't want to ruin my life. You know, I love my life today. So, this is the finished look, bitches. <laughs> this is my makeup look for the day. If you don't like it, you can leave. <laughs> Y'all know who I'm, who I'm impersonating? Grandma Droniac, Droniac from TikTok. She's a sweet little lady. Hold on a second. Let me get this one color right here. And put it on the inside of this eye more. It's like a really pretty. Um, yeah, there we go. That's it. That's it. That's it, baby. There we go. Oh, yeah. Much better. Okay. Okay, cool. Love it. Thanks, guys. Oh, these eyebrows are looking so shifty. Let me fix those, though. <laughs> my eyebrows are not looking good today. Let's fix those. One of you guys said my eyebrows were stunning. And I really thank you for saying that because I suck at doing them. Okay. And why do I do these makeup looks? Just so I can come on here and talk with you guys. Because most of the time, I'm not really going anywhere. I just make up, do my makeup because it makes me feel good. Even if I'm not leaving the house or going anywhere, I just enjoy doing it because it's like kind of like self-care for me, you know? So this is like making me get up and put my makeup on and put on an outfit, even though I work from home and I'll just be chilling doing my work from home, you know? Um, I think it's important to do things like do your makeup even if you aren't leaving the house because it helps with my mental health and coming on here and telling stories and talking with you guys also helps with my mental health and so i've always used my channel as like a little uh, virtual diary to just kind of process things and chit chat with you guys so yeah all right now that looks a lot better now we're going to brush it out so it looks softer and not so boxy Okay. I feel like at some point in life you grow up and you grow out of the stuff that you used to do. Like, I used to really care about, you know, Joe. And I, I cared about him and I thought I was going to be with him. And not, not, I hadn't met my husband yet. But, you know, I thought I was going to be with him or whatever. But I grew out of what he was doing, which was still getting in trouble, still doing crimes, still lying, cheating, and manipulating, and I grew out of that and moved forward with my life, you know, and so some people, I guess, never do grow out of that, um, and y'all know who I'm referring to, JK, um, she would love for everybody to think that she has, because that goes with her narrative of healed person in recovery who's going to help other people understand uh, addiction and narcissism. But that's the farthest thing from the truth. It's really sad, actually, to see how she is manipulating people in that community already. Um, there was a girl who actually, I posted her video, but I had to take it down because I couldn't, I couldn't watch it. <laughs> um, your piggy bank? Right here, baby. Why? No, I don't want you messing with the money in it. No, I want you to show Zane. Nate, he's seen it before. No, it's cool. Don't take the money out of it, Nate. Nathaniel, look at me right now. Do not dump that money out. Wait, how much money do I have? I don't know. Put it right down here. Put it, give, give it to me. I, 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 Nathaniel. No, I, I'm not, we're not going to dump the money. Don't dump it out. Yeah, I'll... Okay, because it's got a lot of change in it, and then I'm going to have to pick it all up. <sighs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Nate's trying to show his friend his piggy bank. and I, <laughs> There's a lot of change in it, and I don't want him dumping it all out. Okay. So. Well, I just follow the natural shape of my eyebrows. You know, um, 
if I let it them grow in, they would grow in down here. I just kind of, you there's actually, do this, listen to me. There is a filter on TikTok that lines your eyebrows up perfectly. But what you can do, let me show y'all real fast, is you can take a pen, okay? And you can go from the middle of your nose to start. Is it like that? Yeah, something like that. Anyways, you're, so you go in the middle of your nose. There's the tail, arch, beginning, okay? There's a little, like, thing you can do online that will show you. But that's how I've done it. They're not perfect. They're a little different because this one's more bald. But they fit my face, and so they're, they're perfect for me. You know? Now, what I do want to do is something that you guys have pointed out to me over and over again for the last week. Is I want to get fucking eyelash, ex eyelash extensions. Okay? And the reason why I want to do that is because I can wear eyelash extensions and not have to wear any makeup. You know? And just have my beautiful long eyelashes. Or, you know what? Sounds like a better idea for me is a perm, like an eyelash lift to where the eyelashes are curled. So that way when I, you know, they, they, when they're curled, you can see them better. And so I might do that. I don't know. I have to figure it out. I have to go to a place where they do that kind of stuff. Cause I have my hair, I need to get my hair appointment scheduled. I have like this one place I go to get my hair done and I haven't done it in years. I haven't cut my hair in like two years. I cut it myself, like trim the ends of it. But I have been letting my hair grow out to its natural color for two years, two or three years now. And so um, I need to go and make an appointment to get it professionally trimmed and um, get my eyelashes done. Because I really want to do that. Okay, put my makeup away. Yeah, I'm afraid if I get the extensions that they'll fuck my eyelashes up because I've seen some people get them and okay so this is what I look like for those of you guys that don't know um, I know y'all think that I'm like some big ass behemoth or something but I'm really not that big I'm chunky but not that big <laughs> for those of y'all that don't know what I look like <laughs> okay. Okay. Let me see. Yeah, I don't want that to happen to my eyelashes. I've heard that happening before. Okay, is this my... Yeah. Okay, just making sure my stuff is there and it's taken care of. Okay. I need to... This is a little doggy pad that I have on the floor for Jenna like a washable one that's really big and covers a lot of surface area that way if she has an accident in the bathroom um i can just pull it up and wash it you know so well that's our finished look for today <laughs> i had a good time i love doing my makeup with you guys if y'all haven't noticed i have been really enjoying it so thank you for allowing me to share my stories with you guys and do my makeup with you guys. So. This is my favorite necklace. Oh, you're welcome. Y'all make sure y'all like and comment and subscribe and go sub to my podcast, please. Because this is my Okay, because of my um, because of my old channel getting taken down, I'm not supposed to have a new channel. So it, I could get this, ch this channel could get deleted. Just so y'all know, I hate uh, strip lashes. Like I hate the gluing. I hate all of that, you guys. It's really, really overwhelming for me. Okay, this ring, I just love it. So, what am I going to pair it with today? Let's see. I'll do this one. This is my black opal hand, and this is my regular opal. I love putting all my jewelry because that just makes me feel good. Okay, that's all we're going to do for today. If you don't like it, you can leave. No. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm just saying that from the from the little lady I like watching. Um, thank you, Pixie. Yes, for my moderators, y'all are doing good. Putting the Patreon in the um, Patreon in the podcast link in the in the in the comments while I talk. Thank you so much for doing that. So I feel like we had a really fun time. I feel like we didn't have any people in here being nasty. So that's awesome. I'm glad that everybody's getting along and seeing that it's okay to have a difference of an opinion if, and not agree with me on everything. And you can still hang out and do makeup and have a good time on the days that I'm talking about other stuff, you know. So I hope you guys um, enjoyed hanging out with me. I am going to get off here and make a couple of videos for my other channel about recovery and for my TikTok and my Instagram and stuff. And um, then I will be probably coming on a little bit later and chit-chatting like I did yesterday. So I will post a community tab post when I go live again, okay? Um, so I love you guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a part of my recovery and just hanging out with me and doing makeup. Okay. All right. See y'all later. Bye.